All right, YouTube, Stacks by the Numbers, welcome back. Wanted to do a quick update as per request on BT, B2 Gold Corporation, ticker symbol BTG, listed here on the ARCA stock right now. Just a touch over $3 here at 302. It's up a nickel, one, uh, excuse me, down a nickel, uh, down 1.6% here on the day. <clears throat> and uh, we looked at this a while ago, and I mentioned that we had this long-term symmetrical triangle. We could break either higher or lower. As we see, the stock ended up breaking lower. Now we're kind of in this consolidating channel here, down here, below this long-term trend line. But in my opinion, overall, the company does look pretty good on paper. And that, I think, is the main issue that we're having here, because... I, I did say that, in my opinion, when I first looked at the stock, you would probably be better off just owning um, gold if you wanted to play the increase in gold as opposed to actually owning a piece of this stock. And if we pull up gold and we compare, we can see we're looking here, basically going back to end of 22. And you can see that gold is up almost 15.5%. And in the same exact time frame, BTG is down about 12.5%. So this is why, again, I said, in my opinion, you may be better off just simply owning gold outright through the gold ETF, ticker symbol GLD, potentially. But also at the same time, I can understand that a lot of people got involved. And technically, on paper, we do have a little bit of value here. So let's look at the numbers real quick. And uh, again, obviously, gold company, BTG. Let's see if we have any news. Should investors buy it? Mm, didn't see any big crazy news here. Market cap right now, $3.92 billion. The company paying a dividend yielding out over 5.25%. Very healthy. Uh, the PE here is sub-12. Of course, again, very attractive. Beta, 0.91, less than 1. Again, the beta, the volatility of the stock in correlation with the overall volatility of the market, meaning that this trades about 9 tenths as volatile as the rest of the market. As we see here, the problem seems to be the EPS side, right? So, two misses, two beats uh, out of the last four uh, quarters. And expected now, moving forward here, the end of February with this earnings coming out, expecting $0.08 cents per share. So, in my opinion, I think that's where the company has to turn it around. Uh, the revenue seems to be pretty stable, but I just feel like the EPS is inconsistent. And I have a feeling that that is probably why Wall Street is beating them up. And again, we can see the, the problem again... The, the, the value of gold dictates kind of how much business this company does, which is why I said again, in my opinion, you may be better off simply buying GLD, the gold ETF, as opposed to trying to time yourself with, you know, a gold miner itself. <clears throat> but revenue increased significantly here from 2018, going from sub a billion up to 1.18 billion, up to almost 1.9 billion. However, since then, when everything was locked down, and obviously gold and silver was rallying, especially since the U.S. was printing trillions of dollars, what happened was now the revenue is slowly slipping down, 175 billion, 166 billion, and you can also see the profit margins here, net margin percentage, dropped from over 35% down as of 2022 to 14.6%, but let's check quarterly. And we can see, it looks like Q4 appears to be their best quarter, posting almost $600 million with a phenomenal profit margin of 26.6%. And then since then, we dropped down into the 470 millions, and of course, the profit margin has really taken a hit, and we dropped down to a little over 18%, a little over 17%, then coming in negative there at a loss of about 9% for Q3 of 23. However, they did see something similar back in Q3 of 22, and then they had a phenomenal quarter in Q4. So only time is going to tell, and you can see even the estimates on the revenue side jump back up to 486 million when they were maintaining 470. However, this time last year, 593 million, right? Now they're estimating 486 million. So doesn't seem like a big deal. That's a drop of, of like, you know, like 16, 17% year over year. So that's why I'm saying that that's why it seems like with the lower estimated revenue coming in now year over year from the highs and the profit margins kind of falling off a cliff. This is why Wall Street, in my opinion, is not rewarding this stock. However, again, we can see that we are in this kind of downward consolidating channel. 
and we have recently just bounced off of this today so if we zoom in a little bit here we can see that today the company bounced off of that red trend line however if we back it up now you can see that this blue trend line was from uh, this top, I believe, here, October 20th of 23, connecting to that top, November 3rd, and kind of cutting down and going across. And you can see that's where it bounced as well. So potentially we could say now that since this pump here in December that the stock is in this descending wedge coming onto this, uh, this uh, uh, resistance trend line, excuse me. And we can say that potentially we can pop here and maybe see like 310, you know, 320 again and get back into this range, which definitely is possible. If it does happen to break below this red trend line here, we'll call it around $3. But if it does happen to break this channel uh, uh, support trend line, then it's more than likely going to follow along this blue trend line here from the tops and just kind of slowly work its way down and you could potentially see that fib level value of uh, about 287 but only time will tell and again going back to last quarter we can see very nice healthy beat on the revenue side and a big chunk of a miss on the eps side and that is why i think uh the company is kind of slipping as opposed to climbing but again very nice dividend yield and let's look at some of the financials here before we let you go. And we can see again, look, you know, just inconsistent, you know, just, just looking at the annual expectations, we can see they missed on three of the last four quarters. However, going back quarterly, they're doing well. So that's why we, we do have some positives and we do have some negatives. And I just feel a company like this, even if it may be considered undervalued in the numbers, as we see with a lot of these fundamentally sound stocks, it doesn't happen right away right it's, it's it's a slow grind it, it's it's a longer process so if you're expecting btg to go from three to four in the next week or two chances are in my opinion that's not going to happen if you have the time to accumulate shares down here utilize the drip <clears throat> excuse me, my apologies, utilize the DRIP program. Again, D-R-I-P, that stands for the Dividend Reinvestment Program. So if you're getting paid roughly 5% a year just for owning shares of the stock and you're reinvesting into more shares, then chances are, as long as the company kind of just maintains its business and potentially slowly grows, then you're going to be talking about bigger and better things. And this is how it happens. Again, slow and steady, in my opinion. Slow and steady wins the race. And we could potentially turn around 6, 9, 15 months from now, and the stock could be up at 5.5, you know, still paying a healthy dividend. And what's everyone going to say? Oh, when it was beaten up down in the low threes. I knew it was a buy. I knew it looked too good, but I was scared. Wall Street kept it down, ba ba ba. This is why I say, again, in my opinion, uh, I, I like looking at the numbers a little bit more than the technicals, even though both are important. Because, again, if the numbers are good, even if Wall Street wants to beat it up in the short term, in the longer term, chances are, 9 out of 10 times, it has to eventually start to climb and get to real value, potentially fair value. But we're talking about $392 billion on the market cap. And you can see now, looking back at 22, we're trading what? Maybe we can call it about two and a half times annual revenue. But here we're talking, if we add these up, we're talking what? Like 950, 13, 1.42. And then they have about 400 million estimates coming in. So yeah, 1.8, maybe 1.9. And as you see, that would potentially be back to the highs of 2020 so that that's why i'm saying when, when a company like this in my opinion is getting beaten up that is the time that you buy you have to buy the dips and you have to sell the rips but again hi historically it just seems like the company struggles annually but it does seem like they may come in higher on the fiscal year revenue not necessarily the quarterly revenue but again i i, I think it's these eps misses and these drops here in profitability that is raising the red flag with uh, Wall Street. But you can see here, dividends began to increase really uh, before that 2020 pandemic and have since increased. Uh, the cash absolutely exploded as we see here over the years. The debt dwindled all the way down. Look at that, of almost 480 million. 
and then essentially almost cut it in half going into 2019 and then 2020 only 110 million coming out of 2020 the debt went down to 75 million and then down again to 57 million while at the same time the uh, cash flow and the cash on hand significantly increased so over the years that's why it looks good but uh, I don't know. It just seems like a mixed bag. And honestly, this is the way I felt about it the last time that I looked at it, which is why I said, in my opinion, you may be better off buying the gold ETF, ticker symbol GLD, as opposed to buying BTG. And again, I understand that whole time you would have collected some dividends. However, we did the comparison at the beginning of the video and BTG was down what? 12 and a half, 14 percent, and gold was up like 13, 15 percent during the same time frame. So that's why sometimes you may be better off just owning the underlying commodity. But the debt, 57 million down to 49, back up to 55, back down to 49. So they're keeping the debt in check. However, the losses now are beginning to eat away at their cash. And you can see the cash and cash equivalents back about this time last year was up to 650 million. And then we just began dropping down to the 500 million. Now we're at 300 million, which means if this trend continues now, they're going to be approaching 200 or sub 200 million cash on hand when they report Q4 of 23. So that's why I'm saying, in my opinion, the company, I, I don't know, the, com the company needs to blow estimates out of the water. That That's what they need to do. And... Again, earnings are out of our hands, and, and it's a complete dice roll. So that's why, again, if you're asking exactly where this stock should be going, in my opinion, I have absolutely no idea. However, assets are significantly outweighing liabilities. Let's take a look at our statements here. Um, but we can see, as of last quarter, free cash flow chunked back down negative. Uh, it's only the second time it was negative over the last seven quarters, so... Of course, not necessarily a good sign. Cash from operating activities, as we see, was up to 200 plus million, dropped down to about half of that. Cash from investing, the losses here, 119 million just began to widen here down to over minus 200 million. I don't know. I just feel like it's a real mixed bag. And it's funny because you could say it looks so good on paper, but then at the same time, you're wondering why isn't it climbing then? We can see a very nice increase in equity here over these last uh, seven quarters, we'll call it here. Assets went from about three and a half billion up to the high threes. Now, assets almost five billion. And even though we could say proportionally that liabilities increased almost the same amount as assets did, again, assets minus liabilities yields equity. And we can see that we went from 3 billion, sub 3 billion in equity up to now north of 4 billion in equity. And again, the company's only holding about 50 million in debt. So that's why I'm saying, again, in my opinion, this company does seem undervalued. But the problem is it's just inconsistent. And you never know how Wall Street is going to react. I always bring up that story about PayPal when we were looking at PayPal. The numbers look good. It seemed like it was fair valued, in my opinion, especially compared to a lot of other overinflated tech stocks that, that are listed. And what happened? The company posted earnings. They beat on the EPS side. They beat on the revenue side. Operating margins came in at 21.4%. Wall Street was estimating 22%. So their operating margin dropped by 0.6%. And the stock went from 70 plus down to new 52-week lows of $50 a share. So again, you never know which metric is going to be more heavily weighted when it comes to these companies reporting earnings. So again, unfortunately, it, it does seem like a mixed bag, but... On paper, this does seem like a buy. And if you can deal with any short-term volatility and you're able to potentially, again, do the DRIP, again, D-R-I-P, that stands for the Dividend Reinvestment Program, as opposed to taking those, that cash every quarter, if you can reinvest those dividend payments into more shares of BTG, then down the road, it may work out well for you. But here in the short term, it does seem like gold is just outpacing this gold company. But the book value per share, I mean, it did dip a little bit quarter over quarter. However, it, it you know, it has climbed up nicely going from, uh, you know, 275 
up into the 280s here, up to 310, still sitting above $3 a share. So this is one of the rare occasions where the stock is actually trading in line with its book value. And because so many stocks trade two, five, 11 times book value, to say that the stock is trading at book value can of course be a huge potential positive down the road looking for more growth. My opinion anyway. But as you see here, uh, revenue has increased from where it was. But again, we had that big breakout quarter there of almost 600 million and have since slowly been pulling back. So that's why I think Q4, which is coming up again in February, Q4 seems to be their biggest quarter. So I think once those Q4 numbers come out, then we'll be able to potentially determine where the stock is going to go. But I will say, looking at a lot of these numbers, in my opinion, it technically does look undervalued. The cost of goods... Uh chunk up a lot pulled back still kind of maintaining around 300 million i guess that's not too bad uh revenue minus cost of goods sold yields gross profit as we see this is about a hundred million less than the highs and it has been consistently decreasing quarter over quarter throughout 2023 so so this is what i'm saying these are like i always said if wall street can find a reason to bring a stock down they will try to justify the drop based off of said negative reason. So that's why, of course, you know, it seems almost impossible, but this is why I always try to look at all of the fundamentals and all of the technicals that I can and kind of just try to make that little spreadsheet, that little pro and con list and see do the positives outweigh the negatives or do the negatives outweigh the positives. And here, in my opinion, I do feel it's kind of 50-50. Because showing me some of these metrics and then saying, that's why the stock is down, I could say, all right, it makes sense. Showing me some of these metrics and saying, that's why the stock is undervalued, I could also say, all right, that makes sense. And unfortunately, when you kind of have that 50-50 split, that, that's when it gets tough. And uh, usually we see more times than not, it, it could have the potential to really take that next leg lower and drop down when everyone's sitting there thinking it should be going higher. The good news is these operating expenses, as we see, have kind of been held in line. And um, we had multiple quarters here. Look, four of these seven quarters, the operating expenses were a, a loss of 20 plus million. And we can see that now as of last quarter, only a loss of about 18 and a quarter million. So, you know, slight positive there. Gross profit minus operating expenses yields operating income. And again, that's what I mean. We could potentially compare it uh, almost to something like a PayPal where we're seeing that, yeah, the company looks decent. However, something, one metric, one metric, right? We could say operating income has been consistently decreasing quarter over quarter. That's why the stock is not moving. And and, that, and that's what I mean. As, as much as you may not like to hear it, if you're a shareholder, it, it could be viewed as justified. Switching over here, looking at the PE, we can see, <clears throat> excuse me, as of last quarter, PE down to 11.2, currently 11.8. And we could see that minus this quarter here back in June 22, that's really the lowest it's been going back the last seven quarters or so. But again, um, the dollar seems to be climbing as well. And usually, if the dollar goes up, then gold and silver has the potential to go down. So if gold is now in the short term potentially going to sell off a little bit, then of course it's not going to translate well to a company like BTG. But again, only time will tell. Uh, price to sales down here at 186, currently 196. You can see it was well above two for all of these quarters here. So that could be a metric used to say that it's potentially undervalued. Same thing here with the price to cash flow sitting here now minus five, uh, excuse me, sub five, not minus five, sub five. But you can see back here, we were down to about four and a half. But overall, it seems to be maintaining like the six range. So now that it's sub five, again, we could say it's potentially undervalued. And again, right now, the company trading basically in line with its book value for the six, seven quarters before this was 
well above one. So, of course, everything has the potential to go lower. But in my opinion, we could say that, again, this is potentially a stock that is fair valued or even undervalued. But again, without having to deal with the company, you know, maintaining those 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 profit margins or the operating, <clears throat> excuse me, or the operating margins, what we can do is, again, simply wait for the dollar to reverse downward or gold to itself potentially set up some sort of descending wedge. And then we can simply step in and we can buy shares or options on the gold ETF, ticker symbol GLD. But again, uh, a lot of these metrics do look pretty decent, but I, I just feel like the overall story is just kind of getting beat up and, and just kind of getting swept underneath the rug here. And that's why I'm saying it may take a while for this one to pay off. Now, granted, if you're involved, if you're slowly adding to the position, if you're expecting, you know, over the next two, three, five years that this stock is going to grow to, uh, you know, five, six, seven dollars a share while maintaining their dividend. Listen, obviously more power to you, right? And again, a lot of the metrics do potentially support what you're saying. But again, unfortunately, only time is going to tell. And we're going to have to keep an eye on these uh, on these margins. Because, I, again, I feel like, I, I really feel like that's the reason as to why Wall Street's keeping them down. As you see here, return on assets down to 668. Not the lowest it's been, but <clears throat> was significantly higher. So, you know, definitely not a positive. Uh, return on equity down to 8.18%. Again, not the lowest it's been, but was usually over time uh, higher than that. Return on invested capital down to 8.08%. Was a little bit lower historically over there uh usually trades higher than that gross margin percentage this is what we were talking about right it was up to 38 it drops all the way down into the 20s which of course is a bad sign and then it chunks right back up into the 40s which was a phenomenal reversal really and now we're back down into the 35 so of course not the lowest it's been however based on where the stock went and then rebounded to to have it again reverse back downward is a negative in my opinion not necessarily a positive and this is what i'm saying if we're going to have a stock with these margins and revenues just kind of seesawing up and down every one two three quarters and then it reverses momentum and then goes down and then it reverses momentum two quarters later and goes up like again we could make the argument that on paper it could be viewed as undervalued but again we could make the same argument saying it's just extremely incorrect consistent and it's not worth owning and that uh, is what i feel is just kind of like the overall vibe of btg here operating margin uh was above 30 percent dips down into the 20s down to 17 and a half completely reverses going back into the 30s and potentially above 40 and now it dips back down to 31.8 and again if if this trend is going to start this now that means that if it happens, then next quarter, the operating margin is going to drop to sub 30. And then the next quarter, the operating margin may drop to the very low 20s or potentially the high teens. And, and that's what I mean. That's just going to be adding to the list of negatives here. EBITDA, once again, earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, amortization. As we see, uh, basically in line with where it was several, several quarters ago. And you can see, again, just like the operating margin percentage, dip down into the 40s, then into the low 40s, had an explosion back up into the 60s slowly dropped down slowly dropped again into the 50s slowly dropped again now to the low 50s right so that so that's what i'm saying so now we we kind of have to really just guess whether we're in like the peak or the beginning of the peak where everything's going to climb now or if we're just continuing downward into the valley and, and again that's why i feel in my opinion that uh, the stock is not being rewarded. Net margin percentage is bouncing around like crazy here. Was north of 20%, sub 10, then goes negative 6%, back up to north of 26, back down to 18, 17. Now it dips down negative 9%. So it, it's the consistent stocks that are the ones that are rewarded. Do I agree with the stock like NVIDIA and their current valuation with a market cap of one and a third trillion? No, I do not. However, they consistently get upgraded. They consistently get price target increases. 
They consistently sign new deals, sign new clients. They consistently bring on new companies and and show the order volume that came in again as of recently i think what like a half a billion dollar order from a company came in just today or, or yesterday or something it's a company that consistently sees profitability increasing it's a company that consistently beats on the revenue side when they post earnings it's a company that is consistently coming in above analyst expectations on the eps side it, it's a company where uh, any financial institution who has a big stake in the in the stock over the quarters, over the years, those institutions consistently increase their positions in the stock. You, you understand what I'm saying? It is just consistent positive after consistent positive. So as much as the numbers may not make sense, the overall idea and move of the stock could be justified just based on the consistent positivity. And again, comparing it to something like BTG, you are seeing the opposite. You are seeing inconsistent, uh, inconsistent metrics, inconsistent uh, uh, earnings, inconsistent revenue, inconsistent operating margins. And again, that is why, in my opinion, the company is getting beaten up here. The inventory turnover, again, bouncing around as of last quarter down to 366. That's the lowest it's been going back the last six, seven quarters. Uh, asset turnover, again, basically how well they utilize their assets to generate revenue, as we see, was above 0.5, dipped back down, got back above 0.5, now it dipped back down to below sub 0.5, so it, it's really, it really seems to me that it's just the inconsistencies here. I love that they pay a dividend. Love it. And again, we had, a, we had, you know, three inconsistent quarters on the revenue and now we have four beats consistently on the revenue but now it seems like moving forward revenue is going to jump up to 46 for their big q4 and then slowly drop down and trickle down going uh into 2024 so i i, I don't really personally know what to make of this and the company just needs to get consistent to see that growth and you can see 191 billion you know, that is uh, going to be the most so far. But then you can see we, we kind of plateau, but they're also expecting 2025 above 2 billion. I don't know. Only time will tell. But again, technically, we could say it is undervalued in the numbers. And I can understand why people are still bullish on it and they still like it. But again, if it is going to remain inconsistent, then we may just kind of remain flat. Which again, if you're playing this for the long term, the next three, four, five years, that's fine, right? Because again, if you're doing the drip and you're reinvesting the dividends, you know, you can let it stay here cheap and you can keep accumulating shares and reinvesting dividends. So, you know, for those of you playing it that way, obviously this is kind of a good scenario. But of course, for those of you who have been holding and owning it at, you know, 360, three and a quarter, now it's down at three and you're like, what the hell is going on? This is, this is what happens sometimes. And now you may have to, you may have to strap in and give it some time. But you can see year over year, some of these mines dropping down. I don't want to try to pronounce them. I don't want to insult anybody. Philippines about a 10% drop in revenue. Yeah, it's it's just too inconsistent, man. It, it's just too inconsistent, which again, right? And we pull up a one-year chart and look at that. Straight up one-year chart, exactly one year ago from today, if you bought gold, you are up about 8%. Is it worth writing home about? Are you able to retire because gold is up 8%? No. But again, we kind of knew that gold was going to climb based on uh, basically just everything taking place in the world economy, not just here in the States. But on the flip side, you can see at the bottom of the screen, BTG down 24.5%. So that's why sometimes, you know, not, not every company is a winner. Right? And not every company knows how to operate itself perfectly. 
So that's why sometimes in a situation like this, this is why I said, in my opinion, when I first looked at it, I said, you might be better off just owning GLD as opposed to trying to like find that bottom and that reversal in a stock like BTG. And, uh, you know, there's only so much we can say, but let's look over at stock charts real quick and I'll let you go. I already talked for much longer than I wanted to. We can look here on the daily that the stock just bounced off of the bottom Bollinger Bands. However, it does seem to be consistently making lower lows here, basically since the ball dropped. So we could continue lower and go sub three. The MACD looks like it's been slipping and, and it crossed basically right before the ball dropped. So that's not helping. RSI pulling back, it's sitting here at 40 so that we could potentially continue to sell off. It does look like this stock does seem to be um, reacting to the 30 and 70 RSI level benchmark. Now again, histor history, past performance does not dictate future results is the same. And we could see this continue to drop down here on the daily the rsi pull back to 30 which of course would bring the stock down into the 290s potentially 280s uh and then we could have a bounce but again nothing is guaranteed but uh it seems like again even when it gets above like the 50 day moving average here it could only hold it for a little while and then it immediately gives it back so that's what i mean the the inconsistencies here are rough and even looking back this is the daily, and I know it only goes back to like the end of July here, but we can see over these, you know, five, six month period, we can see that predominantly most of the time, the stock is below the 50 day moving average and only had a couple of bright spots to get above the 50 day moving average. And of course, rejected immediately once it approached the 200 day moving average. So that's why I'm saying it could be considered undervalued and this could be, um, like a clearance sale for the long term, right? Where you can accumulate shares and expect potential bigger and better things a couple of years down the road. But as of right now, again, seeing a rejection like that, it just seems like it's struggling and um, it's just too inconsistent for Wall Street to reward it, in my opinion. But uh, even looking at this, we can see if we drew a trend line across here connecting these bottoms of these candles we can see that recently it broke that trend line so that's why we could continue lower here to the 282s which of course in turn would probably cause the macd to cross to the downside on the weekly and and that'll you know accelerate the pullback as well rsi was climbing and then it began pulling back and selling off uh looks like kind of about the middle of December, but right now it's trading a little below 45 on the RSI, but even on the weekly, again, we can see it doesn't exactly hit that 30 or that 70 benchmark level, but it does get close to it, and then it'll have a reversal. So now we can see we were low, we're kind of climbing up and going up. So in my opinion, I would be patient here and potentially wait for a better entry if I was looking to accumulate shares, if you have not already, in my opinion. On the weekly, we could see key level here, 338. We can see multiple rejections off of that level going all the way back to the middle of last year. I mean, you know, 252 might be an overreaction, but technically it is the next support level on the weekly. And we'll look on the daily here. Yeah, see, something like this will pull back here, just a couple of cents back down to 294. In my opinion, is justified, and uh, it, it could happen. So that's why if you have never bought shares of this, then, in my opinion, I would be patient. And, um, you know, even if you're looking to add to the position, potentially you could be patient. But again, everyone's different, right? Everyone's different. You might be making decent income from your job or your business. So if you're able to just consistently buy shares every week, no matter where it is, obviously this entire video may not really, uh, you know, uh, may not really reflect what kind of strategy that you're personally implementing. But, uh, you know, for, for any newer investors out there, in my opinion, I would be patient. Like I always say, let me miss the big quarter. Let them come out and and turn the company around. Let them come out and become more consistent. And then when I see the proof in the pudding, that's when I'll take a position, right? But again, right now, just kind of seems pretty inconsistent. And um, here, this was the trend line that we were looking at here. <clears throat> excuse me i'm choking today i got a problem with my sinuses but here down here which oh, i gotta take the gold off and we come down here we have a low 277 
right see what i mean if if we connect that low to to the most recent low before that december 13 2023 that's this line coming up here and you can see that the stock recently uh tried to bounce off of it and then recently broke it again so that's why here in my opinion this is our key level right here around 299 and it looks like if it wants to bounce off of that it may fight and try to get back above this trend line that we just drew out if not and it happens to close and break below this line then we could potentially sell off and drop into the 290s and the 280s as we laid out before uh on stock charts looking at some of those pivot points but that's it i'm gonna end it there so once again this is stocks by the numbers i want to thank you guys for stopping by if you have any questions comments or concerns drop it down in the comment section i'm usually very quick to reply thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel share the video uh and of course subscribe to the channel that is our handshake agreement uh, I'll do update videos on stocks like BTG. I'll try to review stocks like Hershey and Disney for you guys. And of course, Discord link in the description of every video. You guys, you want to come in, you want to talk about stocks, you want to BS about sports or whatever, whatever you want to do. But that link in the description of every video, I will do all of this for you guys. All I ask, just do me one favor, push the subscribe button. That is how you help me help you. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that these markets are very uncertain, they're very rocky, they're very volatile, they just don't make sense sometimes. But overall, I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next one.